ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, the originator and the designer of the heavens and the earth. And upon the best of creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we send our salutations. Upon him, his family, his companions, and all those that follow them in goodness till the end of times. As you all know, we are but three months away from the blessed month of Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. The month of Qur'an. And so I wanted to speak today about the Qur'an. You know, when we look at the Qur'an and ourselves engage with it, we see ayat, we see suwar, we see ajza. But for someone who isn't a specialist of the Qur'an, and for someone who hasn't dedicated their lives to the Qur'an, they will not see connections. Similar to someone who hasn't studied anything in medicine, if he goes and looks at a heart, he just sees a piece of flesh. But if someone is a heart surgeon, he knows exactly what is going on. If something is wrong, if something is right, this or that, he knows all the details. Similar to someone who looks at the stars, you see but dots of light. A person who's an astronomer, he knows the maps, he knows where to go north, where's east, where's west. Just like that, the Qur'an, my brothers and sisters and my elders. The Qur'an, when we talk about the Qur'an, the scholars, they divide it into four parts. There are the seven qiwa, the long surahs that occur in the beginning. That begins from Surah Al-Baqarah. And that all the way goes until the end of Anfal and Surah Al-Tawbah. And you find within these surahs, these lengthy surahs, lots of ahkam, lots of rulings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in them, being that they are madani surahs. And that when we look at Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Fatiha for us, it summarizes the Qur'an. And when we look at Surah Al-Baqarah, it in a sense explains what is wanted in Surah Al-Fatiha. Allah, we say every single time in Salah, mustaqim, ya Rabb. Guide us to the straight path. Does that make clear what is the straight path? Surah Al-Baqarah explains what is As-Sirat Al-Mustaqim. And when we look at Surah Al-Baqarah and all of the, you're talking about almost two and a half juz. The rest of the Qur'an explains in detail the themes and the ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Ali Imran, for example, when we read in Surah Al-Baqarah, they are upon the guidance. Who are they, Ya Allah? Who should we follow? Ali Imran, the family of Imran. And going onwards, when we look at Surah Al-Ma'idah as well, it is a surah that reminds us to keep our uqud and uhud, our contracts, our covenants, and not to be like Banu Israel, which are mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. And then when we look at after that, Surah, uh, Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes and dives into aqidah, establishing what a Muslim believes. And many times in that surah you will see, قُلْ 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 Say, Ya Rasulullah, say Ya Rasulullah. It's as though you are answering the doubts that people may have in aqidah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after Surah Al-An'am, He goes into Surah Al-A'raf which goes into the history of prophecy, the history of Tabligh al-Risala, and it's as though it's encouragement for the Prophet ﷺ to not shy from delivering the message. 
And then after that, of course, Surah Al-Anfal and then Surah Al-Tawbah, where Allah mentions and goes into jihad, its rules, its encouragement, how the Muslims succeed, how they will lose. This is a sab'a tiwal. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the second category that the scholars mention is al-mi'een. Because the ayat are, are around mi'ah, 100 ayahs and above. And this begins from Surah Yunus and the scholars, they, with discussion, they say perhaps it ends at Surah Al-Qasas. And these surahs are unique in the sense because they are paired very well. And collections of surahs, they have themes from this portion of the Qur'an. And they build on each other. And of course the Qur'an all builds on one another like bricks upon bricks. For example, when you look at Surah Yunus, and then after it Hud, and then after it Yusuf, and then Ra'd and Ibrahim, all of these have the theme of bringing patience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. And you find that those surahs, they all begin with Alif Lam Ra or Alif Lam Mim Ra. And just like that until those surahs end. And then the surahs of Al-Math'ani begin. And they are all like around 100, under 100 ayahs. Al-Math'ani meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending the same universal concepts a second time to complete the message. So there is, uh, there is uh, you know, a benefit in the takrar and, and a repetition of those messages. And you find even in these surahs that subhanAllah, Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamd comes once. And when you look at those surahs, Al-Mathani, Alhamd comes twice. And when you look, Surah, ba surah Al-Baqarah, Surah uh, Ali Imran, Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that collection of surahs, An Kabut, Rum, Sajda, Luqman, four surahs, two times two, four. One Hamd, two Hamd over there, two Alif Lam Mims, and those four surahs that I mentioned are all Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim. Again, there are maps in the Qur'an that we have not even thought about. <coughs> then the surahs of Al-Mufassal begin. These are the shorter surahs and they're called that because there's lots of fassal. There's lots of short, there's uh, many short ayahs that you find in these surahs. And the scholars, they discuss, is it from the beginning of Surah Al-Hujurat or is it from the beginning of Surah Qaf? And Surah Al-Hujurat is a very unique surah which I explained recently in the masjid where it's very similar to Al-Fatiha in the sense of its beginning where Al-Fatiha talks about how we should be with Allah Azza wa Jal and Surah Al-Hujurat discusses how we should be with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these surahs with the short ayahs, they focus on building the iman, they focus on the day of judgment, they focus on the reward of the believer and the punishment of the disbeliever. And these surahs are even preferred to, you know, read in gatherings and to, and even read in salah because they're short, so you can get the entire message of the surah whilst you are there and whilst you are listening to it. The Quran is in this order. Why? So whoever reads a surah and whoever takes a part of it will get the universal and overall themes of the Quran. It's not like a book, a book of math or a book of history. Where if you read chapter 3 and you neglect chapter 1 and 2 and 4 and 5, you don't know what's going on. And it's not like a fiqh book where you, you read one chapter, you read about, for example, a salah, but you don't know anything about fasting, you don't know anything about zakah, you don't know anything about how to do wudu. The Qur'an is very unique in that sense where you can go anywhere and you will get, all the, you will get the overall themes and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Today though, I'm going to discuss one of the surahs. And this was a surah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as is narrated by the Sahaba, he would frequently teach this surah and read this surah as recitation for the believers on Yawm al-Jum'ah. One of the Sahabiyat radiallahu anha, she said that I literally memorized Surah Al-Qaf, Surah Al-Qaf, just from the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and how frequently he would read it for the khutbah. But now if I read it, nobody's going to understand. So we're going to discuss the themes of the surah and discuss the virtues of the surah and inshallah apply them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallu alayhi, he even used to read the surah on Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha uh, al -Adha as well. So you see that uh, this is very important. And what's the wisdom behind that? Of course, is because this surah targets and discusses the beginning of creation. Resurrection, accountability, uh, accountability in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. It talks about Jannah. 
It talks about tarheeb and tarheeb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraging us in one way and also warning us in another. And because of that, those two wings that a believer needs, hope in Allah azza wa jal's mercy, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy upon us. Amen. And fear of Allah azza wa Allahumma, we ask you, ya Allah, to protect us from the hellfire. Surah Qaf. So because of that, this surah becomes very relevant to read in large gatherings. Because of the poor concepts and themes of this surah. Surah Qaf. Just the beginning of this surah should catch your attention. Qaf. It's a strong letter. Min huruf al isti'la is a strong letter even when you have the qalqala on it, even when you have the shadda on it. Qaf is a very hard letter. Unlike when in Surah Maryam you begin with Kaf, Haya Ayyun Sad. So, Surah Qaf, when the scholars discuss this, again, this Surah talks a lot about, you know, awakening the hearts to the reality of the day of Yom Al Qiyamah. Qaf Al Qiyamah. Some scholars say that perhaps Qaf is referring to Quran because it begins and ends with Quran. But if you look at the themes of the Surah, very often. This surah talks about Qiyamah, the day of resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in, mentions in this surah the proofs of Yawm al-Qiyamah, the qudra of Allah azza wa jal, and the stations of people on Yawm al-Qiyamah, the people of righteousness, the Muslims, and the people of disbelief. And because of these concepts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us wake up, makes our hearts alive. It gives us a sense of raqaba that Allah is watching us. And when we look at the connection between Surah Qaf and the Surah right before Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah says, Inna Allah ya'lamu ghayb as-samawati wal ard the last ayah of Surah Al-Hujurat, and then He explains to us what is that ghayb? What is that unseen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about and He's trying to make us aware of? In Surah Al-Hujurat, when we look at it in the themes, it talks a lot about the adab that a Muslim must have and must avoid as well. And so because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about man na'il al-khayri mu'tad, the one who goes against, uh, uh, the one who has adawa against people, this is his station. And the one who is, has a qalb munib, he has a clean heart, he has a pure heart, he has an open mind, he's going to be with the station of believers. And subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this surah that has so many adab and akhlaq, and then after immediately mentions having this concept of the day of resurrection in our aqidah, in our beliefs, because a person who does not have fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, he will never fear no man. He, he will, uh, a person who has fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, he will not care to have adab with people. He will not have, he will not care to, you know, hold himself to a, a high status because he's not going to be held accountable in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Surah Qaf immediately follows it after. And again, reminder of the Day of Judgment makes a believer awake. And this is why Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in this Surah, He says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبَلِ الْوَرِيدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reminds us, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ We are the ones that have created humankind. وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ And we fully know what the souls whisper to him, what the nafs is, how the nafs speaks to that insan. But even beyond that, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ And we are closer to him than even his own jugular vein. We are closer to him than even his own jugular vein. This is how close Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Again, making us wake up that Allah is watching us. And then Allah says, إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ طَعِيدِ مَا يَلْفِظُ مِن قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there are two recording angels, one sitting to the right, one on the left. Ta'eed, they're just there with us all the time. Everything we do, they're writing it down. Raqib and Atid. Raqib means they have muraqaba over us, they're watching over us, and Atid, they're writing everything down, they're recording everything by Allah Azza wa Jal. Doesn't mean that this one is Raqib, this one is Atid. That's what some people think. Raqib, Atid. Raqib Atid. Both of them are Raqib and Atid. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does He need the angels to do this? Allah is even closer to us than our own jugular veins. But to even give us an, a deeper sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over us, He puts these angels in place for us to have our 
hearts awaken. Allahumma ahi qulubana ala ta'atik. Allahumma ahi qulubana ala dhikrik. Ala al-Quran. And again, this is why this surah, this beautiful surah that I encourage all of you after the khutbah to read and listen to with the translation, begins with qaf. A strong message. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أملي وحل عقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the Quran to us to allow us to be the people of Quran When we look at the Quran as I mentioned in the beginning of the khutbah unless you spend your life with the Quran and you become a scholar of the Quran some of these maps will not become clear to you but today as we're discussing Surah Qaf and the message that is necessary for every believer because of that the Prophet ﷺ would repeat it ever so often in the khutbah. It's nice to see some of the correlations and the maps that the scholars have you know, come to conclusions to. When we look at Surah Qaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he begins this surah Qaf wal Quran al Majid. He begins this surah by swearing by the glorious Quran. That's the beginning of the surah. And when we look at the absolute end of the surah, and we're going to work our way towards the middle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this surah with, نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِجَبَّاقٍ فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٍ And remind them of the Qur'an, remind them with this Qur'an so though, uh, for those who fear my warning. So he begins this surah with the Qur'an, and he ends this surah with the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again in that same last ayah that I read, He said, نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware with what the disbelievers are saying. He knows what they are saying. And in the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quotes and says what those same disbelievers, they say, بَلْ عَجِبُوا أَنْ جَاءَهُمْ مُنْذِرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا شَيْءٌ عَجِيبٌ أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا ذَلِكَ رَجَعٌ بَعِيدٌ Where the disbelievers, they are denying the fact that there is a possibility of resurrection. How is this ba'id? This is not even possible. This is ajib. This is something very strange. That we will, we will be, uh, you know, we will die, we will pass away and put into the ground. It's impossible for us to be resurrected after the ground has eaten us up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even responds to this. قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ Not only does Allah know that, but He knows exactly where our bodies go, where do the limbs go, where do the bones go, where, how it gets absorbed. Every single thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has awareness of. Even the ants that are there, that are underneath rocks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So let alone this. وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ Allah knows all of this. And then, again, working our way from the beginning to the end, to have this surah beautifully connected. Those kuffar, they said, ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيد That this is an impossible feat. This is ba'id. This is too distant. This is impossible to occur. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we work our way towards, from the end to the middle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, يَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ الْأَرْضُ تَشَقَّقُ الْأَرْضُ عَنْهُمْ سِرَاعًا ذَلِكَ حَشْرٌ عَلَيْنَا يَسِيرٌ This is nothing for Allah azza wa jal. If He can bring you to life from nothing, then bringing you back to life in resurrection is something very simple and easy for Allah Azza wa Jal. ذَلِكَ حَشْرٌ عَلَيْنَا يَسِيرٌ Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully complimenting these ayat from the beginning with those ayat in the end. And then we go back further and we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُوبِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that He has created the earth, uh, the heavens and the earth and everything in between in six days without feeling any sense of tiredness, without being tired whatsoever. وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُوبِ And when we look at the beginning, as we're approaching in the middle, Allah reminds us, أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Did they not look to the heavens and what is beyond and look at the universe 
And for us, mashallah, now we have much more knowledge with NASA and all of this, what is going on in the worlds beyond. In fact, they say we know more about the universe than we do in our, in our own earth, in the ocean. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again beautifully correlating this. And then we go back further. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ هُمْ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ بَطَشًا فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ هَلْ مِنْ مَحِيصٍ he, he says, how many nations, mightier nations in the, in the past have we destroyed? And when we work our way forward from the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, كَذَّبَتْ قَبَلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحُ He said, the nations before the, the, the people of Nuh, the people of Ras, the people of Thamud, they all denied the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, the, in, that, in the end, He tells us what was their jaza, and what was their punishment, that He destroyed them. And so this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully connects the beginning of the surah and the end of the surah to go into the mihwar, the middle of the surah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about ahwal yawm al-qiyamah, how the day of resurrection will be, what will be the status of those that were righteous, what will be the status of those that weren't, the disbelievers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's very unique about this surah, and every surah has something unique to it by the way. Every surah has one word or one phrase or one ayah or sometimes several that is unique to that surah. And in this surah we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nowhere else in the Qur'an where he mentions the heart, qalb twice without being, without idafa, without it being attached to something else. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah he says, مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبِ الْمُنِيبِ In another ayah in this surah, surah Qaf, he says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبِ this is a reminder for the one who has a heart. Again, this surah is to awaken the hearts of the believers to the core themes and to have the concept of Yawm Al-Qiyamah always on their mind, to have this muraqaba, to have this sense of muraqaba that Allah is always watching us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watches everything. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us knowledge of the Qur'an. Allahumma aftah alayna asrar al-Qur'an. Allahumma ahi qulubana bi dhikrik. Allahumma ahi qulubana bi dhikrik. اللهم أحي قلوبنا بذكرك ورزقنا ورزقنا الثبات على طاعتك اللهم اجعل القرآن ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء أحزاننا اللهم اجعل القرآن حجة لنا ولا تجعله حجة علينا اللهم اجعلنا ممن يقرأه فيرقى ولا تجعلنا ممن يقرأه فيزل ويشقى اللهم رزقنا بكل حرف من القرآن حلاوة وبكل كلمة كرامة وبكل آية سعادة وبكل سورة سلامة وبكل جزء جزاء اللهم ذكرنا منهما نسينا وعلمنا منهما جهلنا There are two dua requests One for uh, Brother Muhammad Abd al-Razzaq Who is the relative of Dr. Jamshid He has passed away We ask Allah to, subhanahu wa ta'ala to give ease to the family We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give ease to our brother Muhammad Abd al-Razzaq As he will be questioned in the grave And to shower him with his mercy and to put light and nur of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his grave, and also the brother of Dr. Jahrul Islam, he is undergoing an operation, a big operation for the, for his lungs. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to give him shifa and aajila, la yuqadu saqma. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.